thanksgiving and into his thoughts with praise and be thankful for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come on, let's let the glory of the Lord rise among us this morning. Everybody, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord, Come on, let it rise. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, can we say, oh, oh, let it rise, let it rise. I'm going to take it up. Let the glory of the Lord come on, y'all. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Can we say, oh, 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 let it rise. I'm going to take me up. Let the glory of the Lord. Come on, say it. Everybody say, let it rise. The song of the Lord. Let the song of the Lord. Let it rise. Rise among Let the song of the Lord. Let it rise. Let the joy of our King. Let the joy of our King. Let the joy of our King. Come on, say it. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord come on. 
rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praise of our King rise among us, let it rise. Come on, everybody, say, let the glory, the glory of the Lord let it rise. rise among let us. the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praise. Let it rise. Can we say, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise. Can we say, oh, 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 oh let it rise, let it rise. Oh, me. 
to show you how much I love you. Love you.
to try. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot give you adoration, God. As I lift my hands in worship, I give you the praise. And in Adoration, Lord, I bless, I bless your name. For, oh, Lord, you're worthy of reverence. Lord, you're worthy of praise. I lift my hands in adoration. I give you the praise. Come on, everybody, as I lift. As I lift my hands in worship. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Come on, and in adoration. And in adoration. I bless your name. I bless Now come on and lift it up and say, Oh, Lord. Lord, you are the afraid. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in adoration. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. As I bow down before you. As I bow down before you. Come on, say as humbly as I can. As humbly as I can. Come on, say, Lord, I just want to feel. Lord, I just want to feel. I just want to feel the power. The power of your Come on, shout it out. For Lord, you are the oppressed. And Lord, you are the oppressed. And Lord, you are the oppressed. I lift, I lift my hands. I lift my hands in that array. 
give you the praise. in adoration. I lift my hands in adoration. I give you the praise. I give you Can we the sing praise. again? Oh Lord. Oh Lord, you worthy of praise. Come on, tell him he's worthy. And Lord, you worthy of praise. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in adoration. What do you give him? What do you give him? I give you the praise. you've done great things because you've done so many things oh, 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 oh. I bless your name Father for being the lifter of my hands for being the goddess for being my compass for honoring my steps Lord oh, for being my will in the middle of the wheel for yeah, being yeah, yeah, my yeah, shepherd yeah, yeah, in the yeah, wilderness yeah. Oh, I give you the praise yeah. I give you yeah. the praise oh God oh God come on let's give God praise in the building ah. somebody say he's worthy of the praise and he's worthy of the honor. I give you the and I'm reminded of the psalmist. Oh, God. If I had a thousand tongues, yeah. I still couldn't oh, praise yeah. him in comparison to what he's done. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus oh, and still all, oh, come on somebody, and all that he has done, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. hallelujah! Somebody still got a hallelujah. Can somebody help me say hallelujah? Hallelujah! Ah, yes, Lord. 
My, 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 my. Lift up your voice and give God the glory. I don't know about you, but it feel like a shout in here. Feel like somebody got a reason to praise the Lord. If I'm talking about you, you ought to get up on your feet and give God some glory. Give him some praise. Give him some thanksgiving. Because he's been just that good. Hallelujah. He's been just that good. Why don't you tell somebody he's been just that good? Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, he's been just that good. Come on, tell somebody before you be seated. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. Amen. Ah. He's been just that good. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah. Just that good. I'm reminded of a story. Young lady made up her mind that she's going to go. Ahead. That's all right. Go ahead and shout. Somebody help the, the musician shout. Come on. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's all right, Rob. Get your shout in too. Come on, get it out, get it out, get it out. Woo! Somebody don't know, but that, that praise comes with a price. Woo! Yeah. Tell somebody around you that praise comes with a price. Woo! Come with a price. That's all right. Go ahead and run for your life, Denise. Hallelujah. Woo. Hey. That's all right. Tell your neighbor, run for your life. Woo. My, my, my. Good to praise the Lord. Good to shout under him. Don't let visitors or people strain your praise. Because let me tell you something. When it's all said and done, it's going to be you and God. Ah. So if you feel it, please don't quench it. Go on and let it fly. Go on and let it out. Put them up, put them down, put them up, put them down, put them up, put them down, put them up. Hallelujah. Yay. Woo. Tell your neighbor to put them up and put them down. And to God be the glory. I don't know about you today, but I got a reason to praise the Lord. This is not a show. This is not a put on. There's a reason for my praise. Uh, when I look out at the audience and see cancer survivors, there's a reason for their praise. When I look out and see people who have lost loved ones still praising God, there's a reason for my praise. 
when I know that you have wrestled with certain things in your life, uh, there's a reason for my praise. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this ain't a show. This is a revelation. Woo, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do you throw your hands up, preacher? Because when doctors gave up on you at the age of 23, and here you are now 65, and still proving them wrong, I've got a reason to bless the Lord. I can't tell your story, but you ought to give God a praise and let somebody know I've got a story, and I just ain't got time to tell it all. Woo. My, 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 my. Good God of mine. Tell your neighbor, I got a story. I got a story. I got a story. Where the Lord has brought me from. Yes, yes. And when you see me shout, when you see me throw my hands up, it's because I'm so grateful because it could have been another way. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I stand before you to take up our gracious offering. Amen. Praise God. Give you a great opportunity, amen, to give your tithes, offering, and your love gift to the God of Deliverance Ministries. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We are so excited that you have decided or be a potential partner, amen, in supporting us in our endeavors to reach the laws. Yes. Amen. Yes, we do need your financial support that we can continue to reach the masses for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we dare not tell you what to give, but if this ministry has been a blessing and you appreciate the works and it's making a difference in your life and your families, give according to your appreciation. Thank you, Amen. Lord. And if you're not a partner, we pray that you would be a financial support and partner to the God of Deliverance Ministries. Yes, this is good ground. Can I get a witness in the building? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you're not... And if you're not, amen, <coughs> a supporter, we pray that you will consider it and pray about it and let the Lord use you, amen, as we go forward for the glory of God. Amen. You look on the screen right now. We do have, because of your faithful giving, amen, we have been able to, amen, have our own personal church app, amen, where we can, you can actually give right through the church app. Amen. Amen. You can find it on uh, Play Store, and you also can find it on Apple Store. Amen. Android and Apple. Amen. And all gifts are tax deductible. And if you choose not to download our app, which has everything, our sermons, our Bible studies, amen, our, our podcasts, words of encouragement, and Bible lessons, all right there on the app that is updated every uh, week. Somebody say every week. Every week. It is updated. You'll find even little clips talking about black history. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, if you don't want to download the app, we also have the opportunity to where you can mail in your love offering to God of Deliverance Ministries, P.O. Box 1058, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Amen. 27802. Also, we have what they call PayPal. Amen. You can go to PayPal and type in paypal.me forward slash God of Dale and give amen according to your desire. Amen. And also we have what they call a cash app where you can go to the cash app and type in <coughs> dollar sign G-O-D-O-F-D-E-L. Amen. And be a support. I'm so glad to know that God has made it so that even if you can't make it to the building, you can't attend the service, you still can be a faithful support Amen. to that which God has ordained to go forth for the glory of God. Amen. And while you're yet filling out your reports, amen, as the ushers are giving you, amen, the necessary things that you need, amen, to fill out, to give to the ministry, my prayer is that you, as you practice the law of sowing and reaping, that God will truly bless you. Father, yes. we pray in the name of Jesus, Jesus that everyone that sows seed into this good ground, that you will make it evident that because of their giving, they're receiving a return on that which they have sown. 
I pray that you'll bless their family, bless their heart, bless their endeavors, and cause their face to smile. God, we give you glory in the precious name of Jesus, and to you be the glory. And at this time, amen, we're going to receive another selection, amen, from our praise team. Aren't you enjoying the presence of praise that are Thank coming, Lord, amen, in the house of God today? Thank God bless. You. Somebody say, all the way live with all Jesus. Give God a good hand clap praise. Amen. All the way live with Jesus. Amen. I'm going all the way. But in order to make it all the way, you have to be determined. Come on, tell somebody you have to be determined. Amen. This is not, amen, a pipe dream. This is not a I hope. Amen. You have to make up in your mind. 
Come hell or high water, I'm going all the way with Jesus. When I think about Esther, Esther had arrived. No more natural needs whatsoever. She was now in the king's palace, and she was the queen. But when an emergency arised, guess what? She did not count her life dear unto herself because she was determined to not only see herself free, but she was determined to see others free as well. And this ought to be our desire as we walk with God that don't let salvation come to your house and disregard the need of those around you. Amen. You want to see other people get saved and delivered so that God can be glorified. Is that your hope and dream? You ought to give God a praise. Amen. I have before you up on the screen, and I hope they put it up on Facebook, amen, a picture of Frederick Douglass. This is our Black History Moment, amen. As I was studying his life, I tell you, I was just so impressed. If you download the app, you'll get the rest of the story and also a video to be able to learn more about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass lived with his grandmother <coughs> because back during the times of slavery, they actually sometimes would separate the child immediately after the baby was born. So he never had a chance to really have a relationship with mother or father, amen. But at the age of eight years old, he moved to Baltimore Amen, Maryland, where he lived as a house servant. Somebody say a house servant. And his new owner's wife, amen, thought so much of him that she began to teach him how to read. Even though it was against the law for any to teach black people to read. Amen. And as a direct result, when the owner's uh, husband found out, he restricted that idea. But Douglas, because he began to learn so much, he began to play with other white children and they began to share their education with him. Amen, look at your neighbor, say neighbor, don't stop learning. Neighbor, don't Amen, stop it learning. opens up unprecedented doors for your advancement in your life. And so as time rolled on, amen, Douglas, Frederick Douglas became involved in the abolitionist movement Amen. Helping to free other slaves. Matter of fact, one note I want you to understand is that he married a free black woman. And when I began to look at the story about a free black woman, I said a man can go to the top with a free black woman. A woman that will stand with him, encourage him, and, and empower him because she was designed to help him. Not instruct him and lead him but to be able to support him in that which he believed. I wish I could get a praise in here. This free black woman helped this man to, amen, become a prominent leader, amen, in the movement. And as time rolled on, look at your neighbor and said, time will still roll on. <laughs> Douglas became active in politi uh, politics, amen. He became so, now this is the part that really blew me out the water. I was so excited about seeing a, 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 a black man become president of the United States, thinking that that was the first time it ever was even thought about. But as I began to read about Douglas, amen, it came to understand that he was also, amen, working in politics with President Lincoln <coughs> and Andrew Jackson. He was the first African American, somebody say first, <coughs> to become nominated as a vice president in 1872. Come on, somebody. It is important to study your history. Come on. We are somebody. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, this is Black History Month. Amen. And he's just giving you a nugget. Amen. And as a direct result, although he rejected the nomination, amen, in 1888, amen, he received a vote uh, at the political national convention to be nominated as president. Oh, y'all going to talk to me after a while. Look at your neighbor and said, just when I thought, it never happened before. Amen. But also, he rejected that nomination, marking him to be the first ever to have the opportunity as a black man to be nominated as a president of the United States. That is our moment for black history. Come on, give God 
a good hand clap. Amen. And as I pondered that on last night, I pondered the thought that we as a black race, amen, we need to understand we're talking so much about police brutality, but we have to stop, stop killing each other. We, you know, we got to put up banners and make marches about, amen, our communities shooting and killing each other. Amen. One of the things that I, I am so adamant about is the fact that because of the red district, they know and the police know as long as you stay behind them lines, you, go, you can kill up as much as you want. But the moment you step across that line, amen, so that shows you that they're not as tough as they pretend to be. Amen, because they know they can only mess with in their red district area. I wish I could have somebody be honest. <coughs> if, we're <coughs> if we're ever going to make a difference, it's got to start at home. Amen, and I know there's all kinds of excuses that our young black men make that they ain't got no father in the house. Well, here Douglas, who was separated right from the moment he was born, put right into slavery, but yet, amen, had the potential to become the president. Amen. So these are just excuses that we use, amen, to pander our weakness and frailty to continue to be, amen, nothing. But I pray for every single mother, I pray for every single parent that you continue to be an example to your children. Because one thing I'm so glad that my wife and I had the opportunity to be able to do is that our kids could not look us in the face and tell us what we did. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Not out there drinking, acting silly and crazy, cussing and fussing in the house. Amen. Abusing one another. Come on, somebody. Amen. They need to see great role models. And guess what? You don't have to have a father in the house. You don't have to have a mother in the house. You just need God in your life. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I, I always talk to young men because I grew up without a father who was right in my neighborhood and refused to do anything for me. Amen. And guess what? On his deathbed, guess who was standing right beside him to help him? I was. Come on, somebody. So stop using these excuses to be, amen, deranged and, and upset and angry and on drugs and cussing and fussing. Come on, somebody. I don't know where all this is coming from. But, but, but you need to understand that we need to help one another. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need to help one another. There used to be a time. Come on now. There used to be a time in the black neighborhood if a child acted up, everybody beat him. Come on, somebody. And when he got home, he got another whooping. Come on, somebody. Amen. I remember the days when we used to grow up, when the street lights came on. We knew you better start heading home. Come on. Anybody had that kind of upbringing? Amen. All this internet and all these game show things, that you know, taking the children's attention away from discipline and, amen, playing all these violent games. Come on, somebody. I don't, I don't even know how I got out here. But we need to get back to the old landmark. And I'm not talking about prejudice because I love my white brothers. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 They, they, they just as important as we are. Amen. And we need to understand. I, in my family line, there's a rainbow. Yeah, come on. I got grandkids. Amen. That's uh, 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 who? Spanish and all that. I got all that in my family. So I, ain't, I am not pumping out here prejudice. I'm not doing none of that. Why? Because people need to be loved by people. Come on now. Come on. Come on. All this anger, all this hate, amen, it, it just no sense in it. Amen. And don't celebrate black history on February only. Sell it out all 12 months. Amen. Because you can't take your color off. <laughs> all right. So you might well celebrate it all the time. Thank God you can save money on tan and lotion. Come on, somebody. Let me, let me get out of this. Amen. We need to get back to what God's original plan was. You'll know them because they have what? Love one for another. He, he's, not he's not declaring at all anything about color. People try to use the Bible to talk about, amen, God didn't want them, amen, interracially marrying one another. Amen. He did say that, but it wasn't because of skin color. He was talking about uh, religious beliefs. Amen. He didn't want them infiltrating their religious belief. Amen. Not that color belief, 
but their religious belief. He didn't want them getting off into idolatry. So he said, leave the strange woman alone. Leave them alone because they'll turn your heart from God. Ah, that's the end of my black history in the month. Come on, give God a good praise, somebody. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. It is working. It is working. It is working. When you pray, it is working. When you believe, it is working. When you stand flat-footed and trust God, it is working. But society, amen, has made it so, amen, because we believe our eyes, amen, we're sometimes fooled by what we see. But God gives us lessons about our eyesight. Amen. How do you mean? These guys that do all these magic tricks, how they can be right in front of you and pull a, a cat out of a hat. Come on now. They can cut stuff and then bring it back and look like it's all together. So it lets us know that we ought not to trust in the ability of our sight. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you see is not what you get. Come on now, say it again. What you see is not what you get. And sometimes we live so much by what we see, it discourages the human heart. But God is trying to get his people to understand that when he speaks a word, it's going to come to pass. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, listen for a word from God. Because it will come to pass. <clears throat> My Bible and yours in the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 12. Listen to what the Bible says. And on tomorrow, the morrow, <clears throat> when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. I'm so glad to see that Jesus was just like you and I. A lot of times people say, if I seen what, what the, the disciples saw, I would believe God like they believe God. But let me tell you something. It's hard to believe even when you see certain things. Amen. There's been people who have been healed, delivered, and set free right here in God of deliverance. And yet still will leave. Come on, somebody. Amen. Folk getting healed from cancer. And yet they still would leave. Come on, somebody. People get healed, not able to walk. And they will still leave. Jesus, amen, was human, amen, in the midst of their people. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He got tired. Come on. He got weary. He wept. And let, <coughs> Am I making sense today? And so when we see that, that could fool the natural eye. Are you, am I right about it? And so here we find that Jesus, amen, is walking with his disciples, and he did not have breakfast, apparently, that day. And as they are walking, not getting in their Lamborghini and their, their Lexus and their Cadillacs, they walked to where they had to go. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't have to be big. Come on, somebody. You can stop riding and walk. Come on, I'm talking about me right now. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, the Bible goes on to say in the very next verse, it says, amen, and seeing the fig tree. And what? And seeing the fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might do what? Find anything thereon. Now, now, now here's a very powerful illustration of don't try to present something you don't have. Here, amen, if you read the history on a fig tree, the fruit always comes before the leaves. So when Jesus saw the leaves, he assumed that the leaf, the, the, the fig tree had already had the fruit. Now I don't know about you, but have you ever been hungry? And the closer to eating time, you get even more hungrier? I know sometimes my wife can make some fried chicken, and, and, and I could be a little hungry. But it, it, sometimes she'd be talking about, honey, you got to wait. Mm -hmm. But I have to grab one and just take one bite. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on. Have that ever happened to you? I do that too much. Amen. Well, you had to just go on and take a bite. You, it, it didn't really completely satisfy you, but it helped you to hold on. So here I can just believe that Jesus' hunger began to initiate a little bit more anticipation when he got to the fig tree. And so as he got to the fig tree, oh, come on, somebody. He said, listen here. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. He found nothing but leaves. 
Hmm. For the time of figs was not yet. Now, it, it's, I just can't even imagine that the creator of heaven and earth comes to one of his creations and don't get what he expects out of them. Jesus died on the cross to present fruit in our lives. And when we try to pretend that we are when we're not, that's a strong disappointment to what he has done for us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But look at what it says here. So I can only imagine the conversation that went on between him and his creation. Mm -hmm. Look at this next verse because it blows me away. The Bible says, and Jesus answered and said unto it. Jesus did what? Answer. Wait a minute. Did y'all hear what I just said? Did you hear what the text said? The text said that the plant had a conversation of excuses to the creator. It reminds me of Judgment Day when people are going to have so many reasons as to why they didn't serve the law. Y'all going to talk to me after a while. So don't tap nobody and say, Pastor, just taking it to the extreme. No, no, I'm giving you revelation of truth that here it is that the creator is desiring a return on his sacrifice and he gets none. The plant is talking to Jesus and telling him why he doesn't have fruit when he was hungry. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is it blowing your mind yet that a plant can have a conscious conversation? <laughs> you know, I've often heard uh, 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 florists, flower people, is that what they call them? You know, they, they, they say, talk to the plants. That's right. That's right. Come on now. Uh, uh, come on now. They say, talk to the plants. Now, me and my mind, I ain't got time to talk to something but I can't hear back. But apparently when Jesus is talking to this plant, he was dissatisfied with the answer that the plant gave. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get saved now. Because no excuse is going to be good enough. The Bible says, I'm, am I reading the Bible? The Bible says, and Jesus answered the plan. No man, no man will eat the fruit of thee hereafter forever. How can a righteous God send people to hell a God that loves, a God that cares, a God that provides, a God that heals, a God that delivers, can send someone to eternal damnation. We see it in the scripture right here that God created this plan and God created it to give. God created it to show forth fruit, the fruits of the spirit. I'm talking about us. And when we don't demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit, God is not pleased. And when we get before him, there's not going to be a word we can speak. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the preacher's getting us ready to see the Lord. Come on, give him a good praise if you got one. Fig trees answer was not good enough. Right. And Jesus, in his displeasure, Come on. said, no man shall ever eat of thee. And the disciples heard it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God ain't going to tell your business. <laughs> they heard the judgment, but they didn't hear the conversation. Look at your neighbor again and say, neighbor, you can tell it all to Jesus because he won't tell your business. Huh? Now, you, now, now I know, see, see, you got all kinds of folks that want to challenge what you say, so let me help you out. Well, he'll talk to a prophet and a prophet will talk to you, but God ain't going to release what he don't need to know. That's 
right. Exactly. Exactly. Any prophet come and talk about, he's seen you in the bathroom, you run from that prophet. Because that's a private relationship. I wish I could get you to laugh and be serious at the same time. Tell your neighbor, God won't re expose your business. And so here they heard the conversation, but they didn't get the real information. Let me tell you something. As they heard this, I believe that in the hearts of these disciples, there was an expectation of immediately to see the judgment that Jesus had pronounced. But yet they did not see anything. And because of that, amen, I can only imagine that as they walked away, they walked away still looking back. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you walk with God, you got to learn to keep moving forward. When things don't seem to match up, you got to keep on walking forward. Take your eyes out the rearview mirror and put the pedal to the metal and run for your life. Tell your neighbor, run, Forrest, run. Hey, God. Spending too much time talking about what you've been through. Spending too much. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's been done. Nothing you can do about it. But you can do a whole lot with your future. Come on, give God a good praise right there. So we see here that they walked away kind of puzzled that Jesus spoke a word and nothing happened. That sounds like you. But Jesus never looked back. Why? Because once he releases a word, he knows it's already done. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's time to act like Jesus. Come on, you ain't talking to nobody. Come on, tell them, it's time to act like Jesus. When you speak it, come on, tell them, when you speak it, let's believe what you spoke. I am healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm not depressed. I'm not defeated. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not a failure. I'm not ugly. I got it together. I believe God. The best is yet to come. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm above. I'll never be beneath. I'll always be on top because I'm speaking what I believe. I believe it's going to be well. Tell somebody it's going to be well after a while because I'm going to keep on saying it and I'm going to keep on saying it and I'm going to keep on saying it regardless of how I feel. Sometimes I feel like it ain't going to work. Sometimes I feel like it's no use. But because I speak it, I'm going to speak it till I believe it. I'm going to speak it till I see it. I'm going to speak it till it happens. Why? Because if God spoke it and it happened when he said it, I'm going to imitate my father. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's time to imitate God. Tell your neighbor it's working. When you speak that word, it's working. You ain't got no evidence. You ain't got no proof. But keep on saying it. They were puzzled. They were puzzled. Why was they puzzled? They were puzzled because every time Jesus would speak, things would instantly happen. Stuck his fingers in the ears of a deaf man. And the ears came open. Lifted up a meal to heaven and fed 5,000. But this incident here caused them to doubt caused them to wonder that he told the fig tree from this day forward no man will ever be able to eat of thee. But I'm so glad that if you don't believe 
It ain't got nothing to do with my belief. That's right. That's right. Because the Bible says, will their unbelief make the power of God to none effect? He said, God forbid. And what I love about it is that even though they didn't see an immediate response to what Jesus had said, I'm so glad that when Matthew looked at it, he looked at it from a perspective of faith. What do you mean, preacher? The Bible says in Matthew 21 and 19, he said, and presently the fig tree withered away. What do you mean, preacher? He said, I'm going to take Jesus at his word. Look at your neighbor and say, sound just like me. I'm going to take the Lord at his word. I'm going to take the Lord at his word. Because it's working. Come on, tell him, because it's working. Because it's working. Because it's working. What do you mean, preacher? Look at Matthew, Mark chapter 11, verse 20. And the Bible says, and in the morning, as they passed by the fig tree, but I want to stop here for a second before I finish reading this. And I want to say something to you. And as a matter of fact, I want you to help me say this to somebody around you. Come on, you looking at them? You got your mask on? Huh? Come on, you got your mask on? If you ain't got your mask on, shut your mouth. Huh? But, 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 but look at them and just tell them, don't let the night get you discouraged. Because morning coming. Morning. Don't let the nights of your life defeat the mornings in your life. I, come on, I, I, I feel that in the Holy Ghost right there. I look at your neighbor and say, don't let your night seasons make you think morning ain't coming. Ah, oh, because I remember the old gospel song. And I might not get it all right, but when the morning comes. When I rise in the morning. When I rise. In the morning, when I, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, come on, you ought to join in with me right there. When the morning come, when I rise, what does that tell me, child of God? I might be down right now, but when the morning come, oh my. Oh, when the morning come, what are you saying, preacher? It ain't going to be night always. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when the morning come, I shall rise. I shall rise in the morning. Hey, God. Woo. Anybody got a morning coming? Come on, give God a free praise right there. In the morning, tell your neighbor stick around, cause right after midnight, it starts heading towards day. Let me finish reading. Y'all need to behave y'all so. <laughs> yes. Boy, y'all better be glad I don't know how to sing these songs. Because only half the sermons would be heard. Because I tell you, at the root of my heart is always worship. Because I'm always thinking about how blessed I've been. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about us. When I check out my life story, things could have been different. But when I think things over, Anybody ever had to think things over? I can truly say. Are <laughs> uh, you trying to get me to sing now? I can truly say. That I've been blessed. I'm waiting for the next line. That I've been blessed. That I've been blessed. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. Can we just take a little break and sing that, Robin? Come on. Can we just take a little break and sing that song just a little bit? I know you got your program, but we're being led by the Holy. Put the camera on us, sir. As I look back over my life, 
And I think things over. Yes, sir. I can truly say Woo! that I've been blessed. Hey! I got a testimony. Tell somebody I got a testimony. Sometimes I couldn't see my way through. Hey! But the Lord, he brought me out. Woo! Right now I'm free. I got the victory. I'm I got free. a test. The morning. Tell somebody I'm free. I've got a test the morning. Oh, I 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 can truly, I can truly say, say that I've been blessed. Woo. I can truly say, I can truly that say, I've been blessed. I can truly say Woo. that I've been blessed. I got a test the morning. Put those hands together. Thank you for our praise break, Robbie. Somebody give God a glorious praise. I got a testimony, and I can truly say I am blessed. Come on, say you're blessed. Defeat every discouraging spirit right now. I am blessed. And the Bible says, Mark eleven twenty, and in the morning as they passed, by in the morning. Tell your neighbor, hang in there. Your night hour is almost over. Because joy cometh in the morning. Uh, I can truly say and in the morning <laughs> As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. You notice what the word said there? Have y'all noticed it? It said roots. Jesus didn't miss one root. I want to say if you got a habit and God declared it dried up, you ain't going to be half delivered. You're going to be completely delivered. Come on, somebody. Ah! Put your hands together for your own deliverance. Whatever you stand in need of. Hey, God. Every root. Not just one. With the possibility of return. Was able to escape. <laughs> Verse 21, the Bible says, And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto Jesus, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. Now, though Peter struggled with what he's seen of the fig tree, he remembered the words of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, you got your answer right there. <laughs> what, what answer did you just get? When you don't understand, remember the words of Jesus. When things don't go well, remember the words of Jesus. When things happen unexpectedly as they will sometime in life, you got to remember what the word of God has said. If he said you bless, I don't care if they did come and give you a pink slip. You got to understand that God is getting ready to give you an opportunity to show forth his miracle working intervention in your life. Well, people, preacher, you can say what you want. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not saying what I'm worth. I'm telling you what I know. When God allowed There's a song they sing, If God Allowed. Y'all better be glad I don't know some of these songs. But I'll be singing and preaching all day long. But look at this. The word says he remembered. 
And Jesus gave him the opportunity to highlight the power of words. Peter gave Jesus, come on, I I just heard that in the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to give God the opportunity to highlight his word in your soul. In your mind, in your heart, and in your Noah. What are you talking about, preacher? Jesus had the opportunity now to expound the power of his word. The Bible says in John 6 and 63, and I'm reading it from the Message Bible. Look at what he says about this power that's in this word. He said the spirit can make life. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Receive the word of God. God. Sheer muscles and willpower don't make anything happen. That's not, that's going to last. I've seen people come and try to pretend they saved. And they try all their effort until they get absolutely wore out. Because this ain't by mind over matter. This is a spiritual thing. Tell your neighbor he's got to touch your spirit. Listen to what this word says. It says, every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word. And so it is life what? Making. Life making. In other words, I'm going to keep my confession intact. What did that Bible say? Preacher Mike? It said that Peter remembered. Didn't it say that he remembered? See, you can't let your dark time stop you from leaning on what God said. Matter of fact, the darker it gets, the more light you ought to put on it. Look at this. When a woman becomes pregnant, there is no evidence. But the seed, that embryo, has life in it. The woman goes around telling everybody she's what? She what? And ain't sticking out nowhere. But it did not stop her. Come on, y'all gonna go with me? It did not stop her from saying, I'm pregnant. And she keeps on saying, and she keeps on saying it. But, but as time roll on, she don't have to keep on saying it. Because now evidence starts showing up. Look at your neighbor and say, get the, get the revelation, get the revelation. The more you keep speaking life, the more you're going to start seeing evidence of what you spoke. Come on. What do you mean, preacher? Because, see, when you study the word out, you'll come to understand that the seed of the word is considered sperma. And sperma means seed. And if the soil of your spirit catch a seed, you can become impregnated with the dream of your life. (laughs) Look at this, since I'm still struggling with some of these. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9, 15, and I want to say this. God called you, and you had no clue. There's a young lady who grew up in our church. And when she was small, I used to always call her an evangelist. I believed it so much so that I got her picture when she was about 11 or 10 or something like that on my desk in my office. And I would always say, From time to time when I would see that picture, Lord, that's that evangelist. Might have been out there doing every damnable thing in the world, but I would keep looking at that picture. And every now and then, so that's that evangelist, Lord. And guess what? One day I got a call. And guess who it was? That little 11-year-old who wasn't 11 anymore. Why? Because I kept on saying it. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Don't speak what you see. 
Speak what you believe. Now give God a good praise right there. God is having a conversation. I got about 10 more minutes. God is having a conversation with the prophet. And he's telling the prophet, I got a man that I've chosen, but there's no evidence that he looked like he's been chosen. Look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. neighbor. Called and not know it. <laughs> but, but see, the thing is, when God got his hands on you, you may do things for a while, but it's going to get dried up after a while. It's going to dry up because God has allowed you to walk in your own way. Because he will not violate your will, but he'll dry up everything around you. Won't nothing satisfy. So he's having this conversation with Ananias the prophet. And he's telling Ananias, I got a man that I've chosen. And he tells him his name is Saul. And then Ananias starts talking to God. And said, wait a minute now, Lord, you don't really know what you're talking about. Now, isn't that crazy? Y'all say amen, but, 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 but see, you got a whole lot of saints that tell God he don't know what he's doing. Because in the hour of their temptation, they bow down rather than stand up and trust that God going to make it work out. Oh, let me get off that. <laughs> so he's having this conversation. And God tells Ananias in verse 15 of Acts 9, But the Lord said unto me, Go thy way. Stop disputing what I said. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and before kings and before the children of Israel. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, <laughs> destiny has been spoken over you. Now give God a praise. Because if the devil had his way over your life, you wouldn't be in here right now. You wouldn't be looking at us on Facebook. You wouldn't be dealing with us on Zoom. You would be doing something else. But God has spoken destiny over your life. <laughs> Just like the pregnant woman. Saul was impregnated with purpose, but did not know how to walk in. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't care how good y'all. You still need a trainer. You still need a trainer. <laughs> Michael Jordan, one of the baddest basketball players ever lived. And guess what? He still had to have a Phil Jackson. Come on, somebody. I don't care how bad LeBron is. He still had to have a coach. Come on, somebody. And the God's saying the same thing. Saul was a bad man. But he fell because he didn't have a coach. And so now I'm sending you because now he's ready. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Uh, but see, the thing on the other side of that coin is, is that you got to be willing. <laughs> Tell him, but you got to be willing to receive the teacher. So God is dealing with Ananias, and Ananias realized he had to go do what God said. And God... <coughs> God will send somebody to release the purpose in you. I had a funny dream this morning. Not funny, because it woke me up. My pastor, under whom I got saved, he's gone on to be with the Lord. And he came into a classroom where I was in a biblical environment, and he sat in front of me. Then he turned around and he put his hands on his chin like this here, and he looked at me. And he said, what's the lesson for today? Shook me up. I woke up. I know you ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> but what it's showing me is, no matter how much you think you know, you still need to learn. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, come on, look at him. Say, Tell your neighbor, stop being a know-it-all. <laughs> and learn to receive instruction because it will change your life. <laughs> come on, give God praise right there. Because Amos reminds us, amen, how can two walk together except they what? 
be agreed. Ah. So Ananias and Saul had to agree in the scales of confusion fell from his eyes. And the very first thing he wanted to know, what will thou have me to do? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, destiny. Now I want to get back, because I have to hurry up. I have to get back to Mark 11. Mark 11, 22, and I'm reading it from the Message Bible. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you're bored and sleepy, stand up and go be an usher. Look at this. Look at this. Mark 11, 22. And I'm reading it from the Message Bible. Jesus was matter of fact. When he dealt with that fig tree, he was matter of fact. But look at what it says. Embrace this God life. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got to embrace this God. You just can't visit. Just can't play with it. You got to embrace. Come here, Joy. Come here. I want to show you what embrace means. Are you ready for this? She's not, but are you ready for this? When we talk about embrace, now, Christian brothers, when you go to embrace a sister in the church, you ought to be embracing her like this. Not hugging her like y'all getting ready to go to the... Well, come on. So, 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 I want everybody to know on Facebook, this is my wife, so I got the privilege <laughs> of holding her. <laughs> but when it comes to embracing God, you want to embrace him so much so. She wasn't supposed to say that. She was supposed to just go along with the program. But, but, but when you embrace God, there's no room in between. There's nothing that can stop us and the squeeze. That's what God is saying. I don't want no friendly relationship with you. I want an intimate relationship with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because what that does is now, that makes me aware of her need when I embrace the life. And God is saying, when you embrace my life, everything I am, is going to be on you. <laughs> Learning how to take God at his word and not, now here's the kicker, and I'm just about done. He wants you to embrace him so much that you lose the ability to trust in your instincts. Am I making sense? If you didn't shout early, you ain't going to shout now. Listen to this. Listen, I'm about to come in. Genesis chapter 39, verse 20. The Bible says this. And Joseph, somebody say Joseph. Joseph. Master took him and put him in prison. What is natural instinct? I don't deserve this. It ain't fair. You go in a little corner, have a pity party, fall all apart, and you hope somebody come by who will understand your predicament and join in your tears. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbors and you'll always find what you're looking for. But look at what it says here. And it said, and placed him in the king's prison were bound. And he was there, where? In the prison. Come on, somebody. Look at that next verse. But, somebody say, but. But, but, the, the, but the what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <coughs> He was thrown in prison. I thought if the Lord is with me, I shouldn't even see the prison. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, some places where God going to take you, you're going to become his witness. Are you tough enough? Are you bad enough? Do you got what it takes? Or are you still got your sneakers on? Run, Forrest, run. When the problem's up, run. No, no, no. 
It says, and the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him what? So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't bring you out of it, he going to bless you in it because it's working. Tell him because it's working. Come on, it's working. You done already prayed about it. Come on, ask somebody. You already prayed about that thing, didn't you? Then you got to understand it's working. Come on, tell them. It's working. A seed has to break out of its shell before it starts. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at this now. And it's, here's another verse. Verse 3. Now I want you to know he's placed into slavery. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's placed into slavery. Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying. He, he, he becomes a slave. Now look what it says. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all things that he did prosper. Look at your neighbor and say, look at somebody and say, neighbor, stripped of everything naturally. But a slave master didn't see him shake, didn't see him broken, didn't see him weak, and didn't see him as an unbelieving servant. He still walked around talking about, God is good, child. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he walking around in the prison house talking about, isn't God good? I can only imagine how many slaves said, that man must be crazy. Do he know where we're at? See, y'all got in y'all mind the picture of the jails of the day. I'm talking about dark, wastewater, amen, crap all over the place. And he walking around talking about, mm, won't he make you clean inside? The master seen that this just man didn't let his environment change who he was. <clears throat> and guess what happened? He changed the environment around him. Let me <coughs> do this next scripture. Philippians 4.11. And I'm getting ready to come in. I don't want to bore your patience. Look at this. Philippians 4.11 says, not that I speak, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want. For I what? Look at your neighbor as a neighbor. Why are you complaining? You're in class. How many of y'all ever been good note takers? Can I make a confession? I wasn't a good note taker. But you know what I did? I made the te teachers keep laughing. And my teachers gave me good grades. I didn't really comprehend until I got saved. I was 23 years old. What did I do? I changed my environment. I could have walked around talking about, well, I, I just can't get it. I just can't get it. No. I pretended. I laughed until I got it. What am I doing? I'm talking about, I know one day I'm going to be smart. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. You're letting your handicap situations hold you in your present state when you ought to be looking beyond what the now is and keep planting the seed of your tomorrow. Because it's what? Working. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He said, I've learned to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatsoever state I'm in. Why? One thing I learned about God is that he has spoke a word over my life, and it is, it's, come on, just tell somebody, it's working. Don't you doubt it, it's working. Huh? And as I close, and I say, with all confidence, Abraham staggered not at the promises. He did what? He remembered. He kept saying, and it happened. He's 100, she's 90, but they had a wild night. <laughs> Y'all get that 3 o'clock in the morning. Just the mere fact 
that he would believe in the word spoken. He knew it would work. Go on and give God a good hand. What's that song I can truly say? Start singing right now. I if, can truly if you look at the graphic that that's left, up on the screen, the, the seeds you see in that ground is the seeds of your expectation. You don't see all the seeds sprouting, but you got to know it's working. And I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I want you to believe what you have told God and you have asked him. And you got to believe it's working. Come on, give God a hand. As I look back over my life and I think As we get ready to close, I want to be able to present the Lord. You can sing low rock. I want to give you the opportunity to receive the Lord as your personal Savior. If you heard this word today and you believe that God has spoke a word over your life, even in this message, I want you to have the opportunity to give life, your life to Christ. Say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart and save me right where I am. I believe that you have spoke words over my life, even though I did not even know your hand was on my life. And today I receive you as Lord and Savior. Come on and celebrate with that newborn babe in Christ. As our musician carries us all the way to the conclusion, my prayer is that God will bless you, keep you, is my prayer. Think things all over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a test. The morning. Sometimes I couldn't see my way through, but the Lord, He brought me out. Right now I'm free. I've got the victory. I got a test. The morning. Oh, when I look back over my life, I can think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a test the morning. 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 Hey, I've got a test the morning. Oh, I can truly say. That I've been blessed, I've got to test the morning on me. Somebody on Saturday test the morning. God has been good, I gotta test the morning. Oh, I gotta test the morning. That God has been good, I test the morning. Oh, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I gotta test the morning. Come on, put those hands together. Give God your love.